Well, we're at the end of the first half. It's time for a short interval. So far, things seem to be going without a hitch. That's probably because they're keeping the Vikings locked up in their dressing room. Oh, me here for music? No, 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 we're already halfway through. You're late, man. No, no, me not late, man. Me early, man. Oh, I, I see. No, 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 I meant... I know what you meant, mate. Oh, no, 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 no! Hello? Hi, I'm a shouty man, and I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Royal Albert Hall, the Victorian concert hall sensation. The amazing Royal Albert Hall is made from all natural ingredients, including woe, heartbreak, and tears, as it was built by a grieving Queen Victoria in memory of her dead husband. That's him. He's dead. <laughs> there, there, Your Majesty. And that's not all. As well as being a national memorial, the Royal Albert Hall was perfectly designed for all your concert festival and concert needs, right? Wrong! Unfortunately, the giant dome ceiling gave the whole place a terrible echo. Echo! Echo! What he said. So they had to fit a load of giant mushroom-shaped thingies to the ceiling to absorb the sound. No, really. Look! And what's more? The Victorians would squeeze a whopping 9,000 people in here, though any more than 6,000 is massively unsafe. <laughs> so, when Victorian Robert Newman established his promenade concerts in 1895, where else would he hold them but just down the road at the Queen's Hall? You go straight up Regent Street and it's on your right. But the Queen's Hall was destroyed by a bomb in World War II. So now the proms are held here at the fantastic Royal Albert Hall. So come to the Royal Albert Hall, your first choice for orchestral entertainment. Or your second choice if the other place gets bombed. Ha <laughs> ha.